Now, the argument would be, right, and let's just, just think this through, and this is the argument that, that we're told now, if you don't, they'll die. Th- this is the, the argument is that, that, that teenagers or people, kids going through puberty who are insistent in their one sex and the other, if they do not get the puberty blockers and the cross-sex hormones, they are much more likely to commit suicide than if they are. Now, what evidence solid actual data do we have about that that could that we could we could apply and have some security of knowing that 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 what's going on well thankfully here in england at least the data do not bear that out thankfully and right. to their credit jids have always been very very careful about the suicide narrative and they have rejected it and for many many years I believe it's probably still there on their website they said you know it is very rare and their senior clinicians have been in conferences and on the record saying it's really unhelpful to talk about it because a we don't we don't see it thankfully and b what message does that send young people that this is so bad for you to contend with that that you might end up taking your own life. It's a terrible message. And and actually they made the point, and again, to their credit, that actually young people are pretty robust. And to, to imply that without one course of action, they wouldn't be able to cope with life, they said is really unhelpful. Now, there are data from JIDS which show that some young people have taken their own lives or, or, or have attempted to. And of course any death of a young person in those circumstances is, is, is one too many and it's, it's awful. But this idea that with, without that particular treatment, there will be a host of suicides, thankfully, does not appear to be borne out by the data. Well, you would also think just inferentially that if we had engaged in this new program, it would have reduced the number of suicides dramatically. And yet we don't have any data on that either, right? I mean, it, it's, but what's striking to me is the other thing is that the message being sent out by this, by main mainstream groups, violates very basic messaging about suicide. Yeah, it does. You don't, you, you, you just don't scaremonger kids into saying, if they don't do this, they'll commit suicide. It, it, it's, it's just something that, that you know, actually responsible organizations I and mean, if you talk to any suicide group, they will say, no, you do not. You do not suddenly tell people they're going to kill themselves. If they don't get some. It is an incredibly dangerous, but it is. And that is what that is. That is what so many parents in the U.S. are told. They're told, well, do you want a live girl or a dead boy? I mean, literally, those are the kind of phrases that are used. Yeah. And we hear that from the White House. You know, from the the Democratic Party, from the major LGBTQIA plus groups, that if you restrict this, you are killing children. And now we just don't have the evidence to support that argument. Do we? Not here in the UK, and I have to say, I'm not across the data in the same way in the states. But I would imagine it's not there either. I mean, certainly everything I've read from from people in the states. Why would they? That. Why would they bring it up? What, what is going I, through their heads? Why did they? Is it because it's a sort of complete no brain? It's the one thing that will, that no parent, we have a, it's the one thing, it strikes me that when you're given a treatment and said, you either take this or you're dead. It's a, you, know, you can imagine a whole bunch of treat, medical treatments in which that might be the case. But it's sure as hell likely to turn you towards doing the treatment rather than otherwise. Yeah, I mean, like we said and earlier. These, and you're right, these are children. These are your own child. You're told your own child. Yeah, and like we said earlier, there's nothing worse than seeing your child in distress. So, so it's an it's an awful situation for parents to be in. And I think what's important to acknowledge is that there there are consequences to not acting. And I'm not saying that that is a young person right. taking their own lives, but 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 you know, I've spoken to trans adults, and many trans adults would say, "Look, I really wish I had been able to block puberty because it would have made my life much easier." But equally, and I think that that argument is valid, but there is an equally valid argument that there are many adults who are not trans, who were gender nonconforming and gender distressed as children who say, thank God bu- I didn't have puberty blockers because I may gone, have gone down a path that wouldn't have been right for me either. So I think it's really quite complicated. Well, 